Hey everyone, it's Sunday, so it's time for another edition of Storytime. With me today is Elliot the Leopard Gecko. So Elliot is one of the animals that lives here at home with me. You've probably seen leopard geckos around because they're a pretty common lizard. Uh, they're known for the very, very gentle disposition. I like to call them the cat of the lizard world. And that's because they kind of do their own thing. They can be left alone uh, and they don't mind being pet from time to time, but they also kind of have like their own little unique personalities. So one of the cool things about this lizard is where they come from. Typically, leopard geckos are going to be found in Afghanistan, Iran, Iraq, and even parts of India in very, very dry and uh, less than ideal climates, basically. They can handle temperatures down in the 40s and all the way up into the hundreds, but ideally they kind of like it in like the 80s to 90s. Um, a lot of geckos don't have eyelids, but they do. And leopard geckos have exceptionally long tongues that they can bring up and actually lick their own eyeballs. A lot of this comes because of where they come from. So being in an area that's very arid, kind of desert-like, there gets to be a lot of dust and they have to be able to help clean their eyes off and blinking just doesn't always do it. So they'll actually lick their own eyeball. One other cool thing about them is their tail. So their tail is segmented and is used to store fat. Now, if a predator comes after them, something like a snake or a fox uh, or another large lizard, they can actually drop parts of the tails off. And this is called autotomy. That means they'll drop it off and then it regrows. So when I touched her tail, you notice how she curled it up? One, she can kind of use it to make it look defensive, like kind of sway it, almost like a snake. But then if something goes to bite it, it actually breaks off and the tail falls to the ground and wiggles around like a worm, distracting the predator, and then she gets away. And then over time, she just regrows the tail. So they'll also use that tail to communicate with other leopard geckos. But one of the more fascinating things about how they communicate is that they actually bark and chirp, and not a lot of lizards do that for communication. So most of them are defense calls um, if they get very wound up or feel like something's come after them. But you'll hear this a lot out of babies, especially when we first go to handle them. They'll sit there and chirp at you. So they can't climb walls like other geckos can. So if we were to look at like a toke gecko or a crested gecko or something like that, they have these pads on their feet that look smooth that have lines through them. These lines find the grooves and whatever it is they're trying to climb on and they can go straight up them. So that's why they can climb glass. But a leopard gecko doesn't have those, they have claws. And the claws help them with climbing across rocks and helping dig down in the soil. Because of where they're from, it's kind of a clay-like substance. And when it gets too hot during the day, they'll dig burrows and go underneath rocks and hide there until it gets a little bit more ideal, which is usually dusk or dawn. But also if it gets too cold, they'll dig down further into earth where it's a more stable temperature and then can hide there. So Elliot looks like she's ready for a story. And this week we're making it short. I have this little bit of nonsense, a wacky poetry collection by Denise Rogers. So I found one that's just called A Little Bit of Nonsense. And I read it to Elliot because Elliot's a little bit nonsensical. She has one eye a little bit bigger than the others because of a bump up on her eyelid. And sometimes she acts a little bit goofy and full of nonsense. So this one is pretty befitting. So a little bit of nonsense. A little bit of nonsense starts each morning, night and noon like a 22-foot Sunday with a boat oar for a spoon. An oversized, tall, portly man who wears a tiny hat, a mammoth giant schnauzer who is frightened of a cat. A man who goes to work each day and figures that instead of sitting he would rather work while balanced on his head. A toddler quite intelligent who perches on a stool and teaches all the college kids each afternoon at school. A friendly gray pet dragon who his master can inspire to fix a daily supper with his very handy fire. A double wide young hippo who is a well loved family pet that crashes through the attic floor, befuddled and upset. A temperamental pastry chef who is awfully fond of cake, just ordering your treats from her could be a large mistake. For when depressed she eats a lot, it really is my fear, she'll get upset in time to make your order disappear. And in the deepest jungle there's at least known people zoo. The animals come staring to see what the people do. The people, bored in cages, kind of stand around and scratch, while animals keep waiting for a baby man to hatch. The world is full of quirky stuff, of acts and things bizarre, from monkeys at the barbers to a zebra in a car. But if you cannot see it, it is that you are blind. The nonsense is available. It's waiting in your mind. That was a little bit of nonsense in that poem, but 
nonsense is good. Nonsense is what makes daily life exciting. And it's what brings us new things, and it's what makes us think outside the box. So I always encourage a little bit of nonsense in everybody's life. And just like Leopard Gecko here, who's a little bit nonsensical compared to other geckos, that's a good thing. So I hope you learned a little bit about Leopard Geckos, and I hope you enjoyed our poem. So here's Ellie's little close-up. Yay! Have a good night.